Raised garden beds have so many advantages over in-ground beds, including fewer weeds, easier cultivation, and easier access, especially for seniors. But the initial price can be prohibitive, not only for the bed itself, but especially for the soil. This video gives an inexpensive solution to both the bed itself and the materials to fill the bed. Be sure to watch to the end to learn how to make a raised garden from a plastic barrel. Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate, but especially for short seasons like here in Eastern Canada. So give my video a thumbs up and a comment, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, or you can check me out on Instagram or Facebook at Short Season Garden. As mentioned in the intro, in today's economy, building a raised bed is expensive. Whether you build your own from lumber or go with a kit, it can cost you a lot of money. I bought the cedar planks for my first raised beds in early 2020, just before prices started to skyrocket. I tried to budget carefully, but miscalculated how much soil it takes to fill a 4x8 raised bed to a height of about 10 inches. In Canada, we measure volume in liters, but many of us older folks still measure length in feet and inches, so it can get complicated. By the time I finished filling the first bed with a combination of bag soil, peat moss, and manure, my budget was used up. Fortunately, I do have good garden soil, though it is very rocky. I ended up sifting a lot of my garden soil through a hardware cloth sieve to supplement the purchased soil in my second bed. Of course, doing this picked up a lot of weed seeds, but both beds did quite well. Then the next year, for Father's Day, I was given a 4x4 vinyl raised bed, which I again filled with bag soil after placing cardboard in the bottom to suppress weeds. Like any eager gardener, I wanted more raised beds, but the price was prohibitive. So last summer, when I was able to get my hands on a bundle of lower quality, unplaned 2x4 lumber selling cheap, I jumped at the chance. I carefully selected the straightest pieces of 2 by 4 lumber, three for each side of each bed, sawing them all to the same length. Some of the more crooked lumber, I cut into short pieces used to secure the sides together. I screwed one of the short pieces two inches from each end of the three side pieces, using an extra 2 by 4 as a spacer. Then I placed two more short pieces equidistant along the length of each side for strength. After sawing three pieces to four foot in length for each end, I stood the two sides. All that was left to do was screw the end pieces to the sides. To suppress weeds from the ground below, I placed a layer of cardboard at the bottom of each bed. Autumn is a beautiful time of the year in deciduous forests, and the leaves are a great filler for the bottom of the beds. It is important that the leaves be completely brown, and ideally they should be decayed, although mine admittedly were not, which I'll talk about in a minute. I covered up the leaves with decomposed straw left from my straw bale garden. Self-watering containers or wicking tubs are great in a hoop house or even outdoors in periods of dryness. Last summer, however, was exceptionally wet here in northern New Brunswick. And as a result, the soil in my outdoor containers was very wet and heavy. I decided it was time for the wicking tubs to be replenished with fresh soil. The old soil would be a perfect addition to the new raised beds. The containers proved to be so heavy with the soggy soil that I had to shovel much of it out to avoid breaking the brittle old plastic and straining my back in the process. My only concern is with the leaves at the bottom of the bed that are not decomposed 
and very high in carbon. The jury is also out whether these leaves should be compacted or loose. I'm counting on the well-rotted straw, old potting soil, and the time over the winter to have begun the rotting process. Once the beds are thawed, I'll level them off, probably add a few more bags of soil and compost on top. Due to the undecomposed leaves at the bottom, I plan this year to use my beds for shallow-rooted crops such as lettuce, spinach, or other greens. I may even start with a cover crop such as buckwheat. By next year, these beds should be well ready for root crops such as carrots or beets, or even my beloved tomatoes. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and leave a comment. Then be sure to check out my step-by-step -step instructions for building raised bed gardens out of a recycled barrel.